just a moment here to talk about a finished door, a finished shaker style door and how all the dimensions work and um, you know how I do my layout for it. So starting with this part, my opening for this project was 25 and a quarter inch tall. This is the interior dimensions of the face frame and 26 inches wide. But I add, uh, in this project, I'm gonna add an antique bead detail. I get it from Con Lumber. And that antique bead is 15, 30 seconds wide. So basically, there's gonna be a trim piece that goes on the inside of that face frame. And it reduces both dimensions by 15 sixteenths of an inch. So my height at that point will become 24 and 5 sixteenths and my width will be 25 and 1 16. So those, these are really the dimensions I'm working off of. So let's just start with the height of the doors. I like to leave a 16th of an inch reveal that's pretty tight, uh, but I like that instead of uh, like an eighth of an inch. So I go with the 16th of an inch and I've had really good success with it. It leaves a very fine reveal line and you don't have these really large gaps. Um, puts a little more pressure where you gotta be <clears throat> really accurate. But anyways, the point is my reveal is a 16th of an inch. That's what I go with. So if this is my opening, I need a 16th of an inch at the top and bottom. So basically I take an eighth of an inch off, which is 24 and 3 16 So that's the height of this door, 24 and 3 16 So when cutting my styles, which are the side pieces, that's really simple. I just cut it to that length. Uh, so that, again, that was 24 and 3 16 So for the width, 25 and 1 16 this is gonna get two doors. So I'll have three gaps. I'll have a gap on the left, a gap in the middle, and a gap on the right. So I have to take away 3 16 of an inch from that dimension. So that leaves me with 24 and 7 8 So that's the width my two doors together have to equal. So you take half of that, half of 24 and 7 eighths, leaves you with 12 and 7 sixteenths. And that's the width of this finished door, 12 and 7 sixteenths. So this door is 24 and 3 sixteenths by 12 and 7 sixteenths. So to determine that, my styles, my styles and rails are three inches. I like them a little bit wider. Um, a lot of people go with like two and a quarter, two and a half. I like three inches. So this dimension, this is the one you really have to just do some basic calculations for. If this is 12 and 7 16 and this is three and this is three, you're deducting six inches from that. So this interior right here is six and seven sixteenths between these two styles. But you can see here, this piece needs to be longer than that. And so how do you determine that? For me, uh, it's really simple. I make my groove here, this slot, a half an inch deep. So this increases this dimension by one inch. So basically, this is this little tab right here, this tab right here is sitting a half inch into this side and a half inch into this side. So if this is six and seven sixteenths plus your half and your half, that tells me this piece has to start at seven and seven sixteenths. And so that's how I determine my dimensions there. So this groove, like I said, is half an inch deep and it's a quarter inch wide. So the reason that's the dimension I go with as far as the width, these uh, spacer balls, which I get from custom service hardware, and I'll put the code in there for them, but these are just quarter inch spacer balls, and they just fit nicely in there. So, as you saw in the video, or might have noticed, I'll have to use, I just use like a little putty knife to seat these all the way down, uh, but that's how I um, get those all the way in there. And I like them a little more snug, so they're not moving around, so, they fit nicely if this groove's a quarter inch, okay? They'll hold themselves in place. And so what those allow to do is, when you put this solid wood panel in, 
it can contract and expand and it'll basically hold that panel snug. Um, so what I do is this dimension was seven and seven sixteenths and I go this panel right here. Now that's going all the way from groove to groove, which I don't want this panel to do. I don't want this panel to go groove to groove. So the basically, once you put that spacer ball in here, this half inch gap, that half inch slot or void now becomes a quarter inch and a quarter inch. So to go back to this, talking about the spacer balls now, if this dimension is six and seven sixteenths and I have a quarter inch gap now and a quarter inch gap to get to the spacer balls, that's an additional half inch, that puts me at six and 15 sixteenths. Uh, so basically to do my panel, I only add a quarter inch to this dimension, which gets me again at six and 15 sixteenths. Now, I like to actually put a little pressure on the spacer balls. I want it to be a little more snug, especially this time of year, humidity is at its maximum. So I don't ever see these expanding more than they do now. So I always add an extra 16th of an inch and I found that works really well. So that brought me to seven inches for this panel. So to keep it really simple, to do your panel dimensions, or this is what I do, I take my opening between my styles and my rails and I add nine sixteenths of an inch. I add a quarter and a quarter, which is a half, and then I add that extra sixteenth. So just one more time, my opening between there was six and seven sixteenths. I add nine sixteenths, that gives me seven inches. And this one was 18 and three sixteenths. Again, I add nine sixteenths and that puts me at 18 and 12 sixteenths or 18 and three quarters. Uh, so that's how I do my uh, shaker style doors. So hopefully that gives some clarification on what you saw in the videos and how I determine all my dimensions. A couple other uh, details I did want to mention. The panel on the back side of it has this recess on all four sides so this panel uh, this part right here will just fit in that groove so it matches this width matches the opening here so about a quarter of an inch but on the back side I can show you that let's look at the back side of this door you can see there's a reveal line so this is about an eighth of an inch. Again, to keep this really simple, what I do is this is gonna sit in here. This panel is gonna sit in about a quarter of an inch inside this groove. And that'll leave me about an eighth of an inch reveal like you can see all the way around. So, I take the width of my panel, which was seven inches, and I deduct uh, three eighths of an inch. I put a three eighths inch, three eighths of an inch wide groove, so it's three eighths of an inch here. And um, again, this part is just determined by whatever it takes to just get a nice fit inside that slot, which again was about a quarter of an inch. So that's how I do the back of the panel, and what that allows for, you know, the reason for it is. First of all, I don't want, you could just do this a quarter inch thick, but if I always found like when I get material that thin, it's very difficult to keep it straight and flat and I just trust material that's a little bit thicker. So this is about a half inch thick. And this allows, the reason there's this reveal here, if this door, you know, you're really not gonna have wood movement vertically here but it just gives a consistent look. So even though it's the back of the door, when someone opens it, it's just gonna look nicer. But this allows, if this needed to expand, I mean, this gives you up to a quarter of inch of expansion, which a seven inch wide panel, half an inch thick is never gonna expand that much. But 
that's the reason for it. That's what the back of the door looks like. And that's why, again, you saw in the clip, I was creating this rabbit all the way around. And this rabbit, again, is 3 eighths of an inch deep. And that's to account for the quarter inch that it's gonna sit inside the groove. And then it leaves you an eighth of an inch reveal round. So that's what the back of the panel does look like. The last part I wanted to talk about was just the fit of these tenons into the slot here. So what works best for me, I like to be able to seat this with just hand pressure. And then if I were to turn this upside down, you know, shake it, it's holding in place. So that to me is the fit I'm after and the ideal fit for my tenons to fit in the slot created. I know when I first started, I had a lot of questions about making shaker doors. And I think it's an important skill to know how to make shaker doors because they're timeless. Uh, shaker style doors have always been um, in style and they're still in style. Um, in fact, that's by far the most requested door I get. I rarely get a request for anything but shaker. And what's nice about them is uh, you can make them with really basic tools. You don't need shapers or routers. Uh, those setups can be more efficient and helpful, but you can make these with a table saw. And I have a table saw with a dado stack, and that I do recommend that, that does help, but you can make these with your table saw and just your regular saw blade. You're just gonna have to make more passes. So when you're making these, I do recommend having some extra pieces when you have your material to help with the setup. I do invest a lot of time at each step in doing test pieces to make sure the fit's exactly what I'd like and um, it is worth the time investment. So make sure you have some extra pieces that are milled to the exact same thickness as what you're using for your doors, your rails and styles to help with setup. I do start with rough lumber and you can get what's S4S, so where it's already milled, it's to exact thickness, which is gonna be three quarters of an inch, and that's actually the reason I've gotten away from that. So if you do have access to a bandsaw and a joiner and a planer, so you do need some access to some of those tools, I do recommend rough lumber. That's what I start with, four quarter rough lumber. And the reason I do that, when, I make my, when I mill these rails and styles, so when I start flattening them and surfacing them, I'll bring them to about 13 16 or a little bit heavier if I can, depending on what the material allows me to do. But the point is I leave it heavier than three quarters of an inch. And the reason I do that is, even though these seams are really close to flush, they're very, very good, uh, it still leaves me plenty of room to sand these doors and be over three quarters of an inch thick. So that's why I always prefer to mill my own lumber. I leave it over three quarters of an inch before uh, I assemble. And then after assembly, I can throw these through uh, a wide belt sander, uh, or you could use a drum sander, and it leaves you plenty of room to sand these down and still be over three quarters of an inch thick, you know, to sand your seams down. So that's why I always start with, when I do start the project, I pick from my rough lumber the best boards for my doors. Um, if your face frames have a little bit of a cup to them or some other components, you could be okay because you can pull those tight to the box of the cabinet, but you want your best pieces for your doors because they really do need to be the straightest and best pieces when you're making these. To finish, I'm gonna show you a close-up of this door. If you're like me, you always wanna see the project up close. So I'm gonna let you see the seams and joints up close, uh, and you can see how they fit together. And obviously this door can look good from far away, but wanna give you a chance to see that uh, up close, and you can decide if I know what I'm talking about, or I'm a fraud and you just wasted a lot of time watching this video. So. Let's get to it, let's look at these up close. <clears throat> now again, this before any sanding, and you don't need a wide belt sander or drum sander. I mean, you definitely could do all of this with a random orbital sander, 
or hand sanding if you're crazy. But reach out to a local cabinet shop. I've found that they're typically really willing to help and often their pricing is very reasonable to let you uh, send your doors through their wide belt sander and you can't beat the quality and consistency that you get with that. A little tear out there on that part. All right, but that's what all the seams and joints look like up close. Hopefully this helped in some way and good luck making shaker doors.